Huh? What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Overboy, and I'm going to be doing my review for the 1987 movie, The Brave Little Toaster. So this is an animated movie that, it was an independent movie when it was originally first released that, uh, Disney ended up buying the rights to it, like, in the 90s, and they released it on VHS in the 90s, and it became kind of a cult classic in the 90s, but, uh, it wasn't originally owned by them. Ever, I know a lot of people think it is originally a Disney movie, but it isn't. And what's crazy is it's made by a lot of people who would go on to help create Pixar and stuff. So, in, in a way, this is kind of like a pre-Pixar Pixar movie, if that makes sense. Except it's traditional animated instead of computer. But, um, so it's set in a world where, kind of like in Toy Story, where the toys come to life. Uh, in this world, like, house appliances come to life, and, uh, these five different house appliances, a toaster, uh, a, an electric blanket, a desk lamp, a radio, and a vacuum cleaner all decide to embark on this big adventure to find their owner who, uh, hasn't been to the cabin for a long time. This is like a, a vacation cabin type thing. And he, he's wanting, they're wanting to find him. So that they set off on this journey through this forest and stuff to get to the city to find their owner. And uh, they have all kinds of crazy mishaps along the way uh, and face all kinds of different dangers from being in the, in the wilderness from uh, weather and different different crazy situations and everything uh, until they finally find him but this is a, a movie that was one I used to watch on repeat all the time as a kid um, my mom probably hated this movie because of how much I used to watch it and I'm sure my brother probably hates it um, but this was always one of my favorite movies as a kid like I said it it kind of has that formula that Toy Story has, except it's with house appliances instead of toys, but I think that's part of what I like about it, and it is a little bit more aimed at younger viewers, um, but this one is still really well written, and I know a lot of adults do like this one too. Um, I've known some adults that actually did like this one quite a bit, even uh, when I was a kid, the adults liked it, so it, it's kind of like I said, it kind of has that that storytelling that's entertainment, entertaining for adults and stuff. And it's a pretty dark movie too. Like there, there's a lot of really crazy, scary situations that these characters get themselves into. Um, I, I know a bunch of kids and stuff were scared of this movie when, when it for, when I was a kid. Like we watched it and I took it up to school for us to watch at like two or three different schools that I went to because I went to different schools it was actually probably two schools uh and uh one time we had to like just turn the movie off because it was scaring the class so much like the, the kids just thought it was too dark and scary and then another one we we ended up watching the full thing but i know there were a few kids that were getting scared by it um i'm like i, I can get why they're scared by it but the, the creepiness in it is part of what drew me to it i guess that's early days of being a horror fan draw, drawn into that, that dark creepiness. Uh, this was way before I even became a horror fan, but something about that just movies like this really entertained me and stuff like stuff that would kind of creep me out about like when characters are like stuck going through journeys in the woods and stuff and they'd have their creepy moments like Homeward Bound had some creepy moments too and stuff, but I always found it interesting and entertaining. Uh, and stuff and like like I said they they get into some really crazy situations like there's a scene when they they uh, fall in this river and almost die in the river and then right afterwards they start sinking in this quicksand stuff and get picked up by this guy that takes them to this this appliance store that he has where he sells like used appliance parts and it kind of becomes a little mini horror movie for a few minutes 
and stuff like, like they're trying to figure out how to get out of this store and this guy is like ripping appliances apart and stuff kind of reminded me of Sid and Toy Story except he's not doing it just because he's demented like Sid was he's just doing it because because that's what he makes a living off of and uh, there's like this whole scene where all these uh, weird looking appliances and stuff that have been put taken apart and put back together with different parts and stuff or like singing the song and everything and they're like paying homage to old classic horror movies and stuff that I appreciate even more now as, than I did when I was a kid I always thought that scene was the song and stuff was kind of boring and I still don't really care too much for the song but I, I like the little references that I didn't get back then to like especially now that I've been watching these monster movies lately I kind of started getting the references even more and like uh, this lamp character has like a voice that sounds like Peter Lorre uh, he's a uh, uh, actually voiced by Phil Hartman who also does the voice of the air conditioner at the beginning of the movie which is something else I thought was kind of cool is this movie had a big cast of and stuff that of people that would later become famous and stuff like John Lovitz is in here as the voice of the radio and uh, um, the lamp was uh, voiced by Tim Stack and uh, Thurl Raven Croft who sang the You Were a Mean One Mr. Grinch song and also did the voice of Tony the Tiger in the the commercials for Frosted Flakes. He uh, does the voice of Kirby the vacuum cleaner who is probably my favorite character because he's just this really grumpy character that even as a kid I always liked him even though he was kind of mean and stuff to the other characters I always liked him because I, I was like if I was surrounded by all these other characters I'd be annoyed and stuff too and be grumpy because the characters can are kind of annoying and stuff to him because they're all like all happy-go-lucky and I can get why he'd be annoyed by them and stuff but uh, I actually do like all of the characters though especially like I said Kirby's my favorite but I also love uh, the radio that's uh, voiced by John Lovitz I've always liked him he's kind of amusing and kind of the comic relief out of the group but Lampy is also really funny too <laughs> Uh, the only character I really don't like is blank is the blanket he's just really whiny and he's like a little kid and even as a kid I didn't like him because he always reminded me of my brother the way he was whiny and stuff and if my brother was watching this and, uh, he was yeah my bad but it's the truth he, and everything uh, but I, I, I really do like this movie I think it holds up really well the animation is still really good um, and for being a independent movie and stuff, they, they did a good job with the the animation and everything. I, I really enjoy like the the story and the the adventure feel to it. And it, it is a fun movie. Is it the best movie ever made? No, it it is a little corny now. Now that I'm older and stuff, but at the same time, I also really enjoy it. And there are some good adult references and jokes in here too. Like there's one particular one that I never caught it as a kid um, but there's a part where uh, the air conditioner is just being rude to all of the characters and uh, Kirby uh, pops off at him and he's like what are you gonna do Kirby suck me to death <laughs> and it's the way the line is delivered and stuff and the look on the air conditioner's face when he says it is just like very <laughs> very like in your face innuendo joke that I, I never caught until till nowadays but I, I actually think it's really hilarious and uh that 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 whole scene with him is really good and uh also there towards the end of it when they're in the junkyard and you hear this the song about the the cars being worthless now and they're, they're getting turned into to scrap metal and stuff it, it's it's pretty dark and everything like you see these cars on this conveyor belt and they get crushed and everything it's it's really dark for a g-rated movie uh i honestly don't get how this movie got away with being rated g um and there's also a scene where the toaster has this nightmare that as a kid it never it didn't scare me as much until i like got older as a kid um because back then i wasn't really scared of them but there 
the toaster's like having this nightmare and this clown pops up and everything and he's just really creepy looking and Jim Cummings does his voice and the only thing he says is run but it's just like very very creepy and everything and, and I'm terrified of clowns so nowadays it, it really creeps me out uh, back then it didn't really creep me out as much because I wasn't scared of clowns back then uh, I, I didn't really start getting scared of clowns till I was closer to my teens actually but that that scene is just it, it creeps me out nowadays out of all the stuff in the movie that's the one scene that does kind of creep me out but this is a, a pretty fun movie it like I said it does kind of have a little bit of a tone issue though because it has a lot of light-hearted funny moments and stuff that tries to appeal to kids but it also has a lot of dark stuff and everything but I think that's part of what makes this movie uh, work so well nowadays as an adult like I can still enjoy it for the darkness and part of it is nostalgia too because like I said this is one of my favorites from when I was a kid it's kind of like kind of like with snow dogs it's kind of a comfort movie because it's one that I've always loved from my childhood so uh, and I've been wanting to review it for a while so I thought since I I was re-watching it this time I'd go ahead and re do a review for it because it it's one of those movies I've always really liked a lot so um, I'd say I'd give the brave little toaster an 8 out of 10 uh, if you would have asked me 20 years ago I probably would have gave it a 10 out of 10 but now that I'm older and stuff I, I can see some of the the little issues with it and some of the songs in here aren't very good if uh, there's like little parts of the movie that I feel like if they took out like the stuff with the there's a scene with when they come across across all these animals and stuff in the forest that didn't really go anywhere or need to be in the movie it just kind of was there to fill in the time and everything to make this movie 90 minutes I think they could have taken some of that stuff out and a couple of the songs towards the end of it mainly the song that's at their at the uh, at their owner's house and stuff all the new appliances that are jealous of them and stuff the song that they sing just wasn't very good I've never liked that song either it was always one of my least favorite parts of the movie even as a kid and everything that uh, they could have taken that out but aside from that I really enjoy this movie and I think it's a really uh, underrated animated movie that that doesn't really get the credit it deserves it's always been one I've really liked a lot I know it does have a cult following and there are people that like it but it just I don't know uh, why it doesn't do as good it, or get talked about as much anymore uh, I know a lot of kids did like it when I was growing up but people don't really talk about it anymore it it has a has its fan base but it just I just feel like it deserves more credit than it gets so um, but anyway let me know in the comments if you've seen the brave little toaster what you think of it I, I'm curious to see if you think it's really good if you've if you used to watch it like I did and you've seen it in recent years do you still love it as much as you did as a kid um, or do you think it just hasn't aged very well I still like it a lot and everything I, I watch it every few years like I said it's a comfort movie for me it's not not necessarily a super super great movie but it, it's it's fine for what it is and also the the song Tutti Frutti uh, which plays at the beginning of this movie during the scene when all the characters are are uh, or cleaning up the house and stuff I, I love that song too it just it, and every time I hear it the first thing I think of is this movie because of that because of the way, way they're dancing around and stuff it just such a great moment and like I said this is one of those movies I just absolutely love but let me know in the comments what you think of this movie and I hope you enjoy this video and have a good day everybody